story about a, a guy who uh, had all these dogs. Okay. And uh, I don't think it was in Richmond, but something maybe what kind of dogs? Kentucky. He had a whole variety of dogs that okay. he was rescuing. Man, that's loud. I can hear the barking already. I hope yeah. he got a lot of sleep. He had 179 oh, dogs. Oh, so no. He got, he got arrested. These are visual recording. No visual recording. That's okay. You look fantastic, by the way. <laughs> My name is Ty. It's really nice Hi, to meet you. Rebecca. Rebecca? Okay. So are you putting it on Facebook or what are you doing with it? So normally uh, I have a YouTube channel, uh, if you like. If you'd like to see some of the other videos I put up. And it's just basically a compilation of really positive conversations I have with people okay. in a short time frame about whatever they want to talk about. Okay. And what's your doctor title? My my doc my thesis? No, you have a DR. So I was yes, it's a doctor. Your, uh, yeah. yeah, tell me. I got my doctorate at Georgia Tech. It's uh, in biochemistry. Oh, there you go. Yeah, my yeah. Son yeah. is getting his PhD there right now in material science. Where? Georgia Tech. Really? Georgia Tech. Who is he working for, by the way? If you don't mind me asking, do you know who is? I don't know the person's name. You don't it's know a male. The supervisor? Soper? Is it by chance? Is he walk? Is he working in the quadrangle? Have you been to campus? I have, and I've been to his lab. I can't tell you. Is it in the fancy part of the school? No, it's not. <laughs> Mine it's, wasn't either. Paper yeah. Science Development Institute? No, his girlfriend is in paper science, which they're well-funded for that. So yeah, He's yeah, doing something with uh, lead and strands. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. It's a good school. Um, I think one of the best things that I got out of being, working there is realizing that I came in there with the idea of I had a great high school career, I had a great undergrad career, all I have to do is just keep studying and I'll be fine. Mm -hmm. But then I realized when I hit grad school, the playing field is completely different. And the only way to get better was by asking people for help and making a network of people who can like get me through. That was like one of the greatest things. And George Beck has a great swath of people who can help you out. Is there, so normally what we have is a conversation about anything that you think is really important, something that you find motivating, something that you believe is true, something you're certain about. Maybe you circle your life around, favorite TV show, <laughs> anything you want. Um, I've circled my life around the like, belief that we have to take care of everyone in the younger generation to bring them forward so that they're all have a, uh, have a fair opportunity at have succeeding. Have a fair opportunity. You believe that everyone, that we have the responsibility to give the next generation a fair opportunity to, ex to succeed? Right. Okay, just want to make sure. That's it. What do you mean by fair opportunity? That those doors that might be shut because of um, because of presupposition, bias, prejudice, mm -hmm. and then probably because of um, you know levels of poverty. Okay. We have an obligation to do what we can to help people reach a minimum level of developing the competencies needed to succeed. Why do you believe we have this obligation? Because without it, we won't really have a successful um, commonwealth. Okay, won't have successful commonwealth. Is that, has that been demonstrated anywhere? Or like in history? I mean, I think that you can look at stats for the impact of, um, yeah, school failure mm -hmm. and the consequences of that on economic uh, success okay. as well as um, potential for, um, you know, incarceration or... Sure, I can see um, that. Yeah, so there's stats that establish that. If it turned out to be the case that you totally could have a successful commonwealth, Mm -hmm. Without ingraining these ideas of you know fairness, um, uh, people being equal, sexes being equal, races being equal. Well, I didn't use the word equal. Oh, okay. I said fair opportunity fair opp for um, success. It, I don't know. I mean, equity is different than equal, and yeah, okay. I'm not necessarily saying equal. So then, just equal access to these opportunities. If you could. Mm -hmm. If by denying equal opportunities, mm -hmm. you still had a successful commonwealth, would that impinge your confidence that, you know... That it matters? That, yeah, that fair opportunity is actually important? 
Well, probably it does go deeper than that, yeah. So I think that the um, Judeo-Christian uh, origin stories okay. um, talk about Adam and Eve, and I think that the principle behind the idea that we are all of the same genetic makeup is the notion that you, if no one's a stepchild, mm. then everyone's entitled to the same inheritance, mm -hmm. and the same access to the family's wealth. Okay, okay. So therefore, and I think that's the reason for the, um, you know, stories in Genesis about how humankind came to be. Okay. That we are all of one, Bria College has it in their motto, which I can't think of it exactly, but somehow of all being of the same blood. Right, um, because we're all inherently the same organism, kind, species. Right, and we I think all... that, right, no, nonetheless, we have been, we have a duty to, you know, to the rest of the species in the, in the world, too, of course, because um, certainly there's one train of thought that would say, you know, biodiversity is, is a gift, and, and thus those who might think that there is a, um, the notion of gift of nature mm. comes from an idea that there is a creator, Okay, I okay. Think. So, therefore, if there's a, a creator who made biodiversity happen and it serves a good a purpose for the good, and then we have an obligation to preserve that. So our, our sense of doing good by others is, and providing some measure of a, of a base mm. for everyone probably extends beyond the human species. So, as an example, in the Herald Leader today, the head, the front page, I believe it was today, had a story about a, a guy who uh, had all these dogs. Okay. And uh, I don't think it was in Richmond, but something maybe. What kind of dogs? Kentucky. He had a whole variety of dogs that okay. he was rescuing. Man, that's loud. I can hear the barking already. I hope yeah. he got a lot of sleep. He had 179 dogs. Oh so he no! Got, he got arrested for his prosecution of, or for, for taking, for not taking good care of those yeah, dogs. Yeah, you can't of that many dogs, right? right. But I understand but why he's trying to do it. He, a, you may understand why he's trying to do it, but the fact that they are that we criminalize the failure to do it shows our society's belief that we have this baseline. We have of a care. standard. Yeah. Yes. So not just for humans, but really for. Is your belief in a creator the foundation of this belief that you have? Well, I'm willing to go with that. Mm. If is it possible to someone else for someone else to reach that same belief without using that as their foundation? Like, I think it's possible if people go in, like as you said, if you break down who we are, yeah, um, you know, the DNA, all those ancestry in places that are so into doing that nowadays, that we are all of one um, one blood, that notion. So therefore, if we are, then is there some sense of equity? But you don't need to believe in a creator to have that understanding. Is that what you're, is, did I, am I interpreting that correctly? Or do you have to believe in a creator to have that? I don't know. I'm not, my major was American studies, not philosophy. I'm a lawyer, not a philosopher. I, I mean, I like philosophy, but yeah. I don't know for sure. I don't want to, I think that there are a I lot of people, personal. there are a lot of people who believe in a, in a God who believe very much in a um, striated society, right? Uh, could you, I'm sorry, the helicopter. Yeah. There are a lot of people who believe in a God, but who believe in a striated society. Yes, like caste system, for example. Yeah, right. right, and they believe firmly in a God. But there, they think that that's how God ordained the world to be, right? I was wondering, like, there might be people who believe in fair opportunities of people because we're all the same yeah. people, but have no God belief whatsoever. Absolutely, I'm sure. I mean, I've known many people who, prob who probably do. They come, you know, just the humanist perspective right but again I'm not I, I don't know because I haven't really stripped that down to see uh, what their th thoughts are where are you at right now like what do you mean like where how confident are you that this creator belief is actually the foundation of the belief that you presented about fair opportunities I'm pretty confident that that's the foundation of my belief yeah I'm just talking about but, your beliefs. yeah but am I absolutely I mean I, for me, faith doesn't exist without doubt. So cool! Whoa, that's the first time I heard that. 
Faith. <laughs> How old are you? I'm 32. Uh, Faith doesn't exist. Well, I'm not twice your age yet. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I was so happy when I turned 30 because that's when you start building street cred oh. on the whole how old are you thing question. Because then you oh. throw that out and people are like, all right, you're old. But not as old as you think you are. I was like, true, true, but I am old. Thank you for that. Okay, so we're done. <laughs> all done. One last question. Yes, sir. Do you think that... Um, are you convinced that basing your system on faith with the addition of doubt is a reliable way to come to this conclusion about fair opportunities or is there potentially better sets of evidence or observations that you've made for example like all of us sharing the same genetic DNA a better preface for establishing this foundation well if there's a God and a creator then you could simply say under a natural law theory God, God created us to be of one blood so that you know that it comes out of that could come out of the notion of a of a god and a creator. Mm. I, I think that uh, for myself, I would never have sacrificed my the amount I've sacrificed in my life for others, except for my belief that the path, you know, I'm a, that my path is that, to follow this notion of living for others. So it's a it's in my adult life a Christ centered path. So without that I never would have done the levels of sacrifice I've done to try to live out the belief I just described. Okay. Or be, de be you know, dealt with the... Uh, it was a really big motivation for you to do that stuff. Correct. It has kept me on the path to do it. Okay. But that's just my, me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Back so up. great. So Had biochemistry. Biochemist, your son's in material science. Material science. How yes, far is he into his program? He's, he's finishing his second year. Okay, that's the hardest year. Is it? Yeah, because first year you're just barely trying to hang on. Yes. People are. You're. It's a weeding out program, very mm -hmm. much so. So you're losing friends left and right. Second year, you're beginning to like get a grip on things. It's. It's. By the second year, you have a discipline that you've exhibited that demonstrates to everybody including yourself that you belong there and that you're doing the work that needs to be done but then third year you're bored because you've figured out the pattern to get everything done and fourth year you're just trying to get out it's like, so how many years did it take you I did four years of school and I also did one year off to work in Sweden while I was at Jordan Tech I got a really good program there and it gave me extra time to write my thesis oh, did you write it over there yeah I, I got some so my research program was a little bit different.